Amen. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Hope you had a good lunch. Did you? You don't sound like you had a good lunch. I, <laughs> I, I you know, every evening, I, I, every time I come here, I, I really um, make mention of how well the music is in this church and in this camp meeting. I also want to make mention of how good the food is. And to, and to really give a shout out to the culinary team and social committee, social committee guys doing a fantastic job. And, um, and, and for the number of individuals that have hosted us since we came, it has, re, it has been such a tremendous blessing to fellowship with you uh, and to, share, to worship with you. May the Lord bless you real good. And, um, and in a very special way, um, I really want to single out the three young ladies who sang earlier. Where, where you guys are? There you go. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, they, they did a fantastic job. Where's the other? Yeah, yeah, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Because if you have that singing talent, you're going to be coming up quite a few Quite a few times. Oh my goodness, I I was I was blown away. I was blown away. I was blown away. So I, I I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm a little inquisitive. And I sat there and I was wondering, how old are you guys? <laughs> so so so. First of all, I want to get your name. What's your name? Tiffany. Tiffany. How old are you, Tiffany? Twelve. Twelve. Wow. And you are? Tiana. Tiana. And Tiana is how old? Nine. Nine. And you are? Tamara. Tamara. And Tamara is old? Ten. So this is Tia. Tiffany. Tiffany. Tiana. Tiana. Tamara. You guys plan this stuff? That you all start with T? No? Is your mom here? Or who's here? Your dad. Dad, where are you? Oh, there you go, dad. All right, dad. dad. You all plan this stuff, dad? No? Okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, man. They are, they are incredible, incredible. And, and, and the, folks, the folks in the Cayman Islands, um, that song that you just did, yeah, it's a well-known song over there, and I'm sure they are being blessed. Can I ask you to sing one more verse of it? <laughs> Is that all right? Can we get some mic for them? You can sing one more verse. Beulah Land. It's a well-popular song, and the folks, some folks are watching from the Cayman Islands, and so um, I'm sure they'll be happy. They're going to thank me when I get back home. Um, to say hey, and so this is a tribute, tribute to the guys in the Cayman Islands, all right? And by the way, by the way, I must confess, I only realized that they, were, they didn't have any music singing when they were at the end of the song. It was so beautiful. Okay, one more verse of it. I'm kind of home, kind of homesick for a country to which I've never, never, never been, been before. before. No sad goodbyes, sad goodbyes will be. Spoken for time wants more, time wants matter anymore. Beat. 
Amen. Come on, give them an amen. Amen. Oh, man, this is so beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, um, Tiana, Tiara, and... <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> tremendous, tremendous. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Tonight, we want to switch a little bit and go back to our main part of our theme. Jesus is coming, and the presentation that we will share together um, was forcefully planted in my mind just about three, four years ago. I was concerned that Things are happening on the planet, lots of stuff happening on the planet, that the Bible spoke about, but in my mind, people were not connecting the dots between the things that are currently happening and what the prophecies of the Bible have been saying. And so, if we leave it up to CNN and Fox News and all these American big news company, they just present the news and we consume it. But as Seventh-day Adventists, we cannot consume the news like others. We have to make sense of the news from a prophetic perspective. So, the... 2020, the coronavirus caught me in Mountain View, California, Silicon Valley. I was working on my license hours for my clinical psychology license and was doing my clinical hours up there and was pastoring the Mountain View Seventh the Adventist Church that's in the heart of Silicon Valley, Google, Facebook, um, Twitter, all of these big companies are around there. And so during the shutdown, California was the first state in the U.S. to shut down, shelter in place. I didn't even know what that meant at the time. So we're all completely locked down. And I... I said, Lord, no, I can't, I can't go to church and I can't go to the clinic. And, I, and so I'm just stuck in my apartment. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? And the Lord impressed upon my mind this coronavirus that is taking the entire globe, that has shut down the entire globe, has grounded all flights, airplanes, grounded all public transportation, locked down hotels, locked down um, 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 uh, uh, factories. I have never in my entire lifetime seen anything that locked down the entire world. And so I said, no, 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 no. This, there got to be something. This is too big for it just to be a disease. There got to be something prophetic here. And so the Lord spoke to me to say, go search diligently. So I went to my church. And by the way, my church at the time was a, in Mountain View, still is, a big church. That's a church Ellen White used to visit. That's a church where the Pacific Press used to be. And when I went to that church, I was blown away. They have one of the biggest libraries. So I went to the church to the library, I drove down to, the, to, to my church, empty streets, because now it's, it is shut down, and I went into the library, and I picked up all the SDA Bible commentaries, and I, all Ellen White books, and all the prophetic books that I could find in the Bible, in the library, I put them in my car trunk, and I drove home, 
and I spread them out on the floor. And for the next month, couple of months, 15 months or so, it was me and the books together with the Holy Spirit. And um, the Spirit says, identify all the prophecies in the Bible on one hand and then match to see how many of them have already been fulfilled. Ooh. And my eyes, I was blown away by it and the Spirit gave me the instruction, put it in a book and send it out so that the entire world could read it. And so I wrote the book, Is God Still Coming? Is God Still Coming? Key word there is still coming. And the answer to that is in the prophetic fulfillment. How does current event fulfill Bible prophecy? I wanted to carry a number of them here, but because of the luggages and traveling so far, we could not. But the book is available on Amazon. I have a little promo. I'm going to ask the eyes to play the promo for you, if it is possible, on that book. They're coming up in a couple of minutes. Just start it, if you can find it. There you go. get the volume Here goes the copy of it. You can get it at Barnes and Noble, order it on Amazon, and get a copy of it. It's a Bible companion. Every Seventh day Adventist need to get a copy, personal copy of it. I had one copy a while ago and somebody took it off me. So I would love for you to end to get a copy of this book. Our subject. Most of what we discussed tonight and some of what you have heard already in, on Sabbath, the stone is coming. All of that is in the book, including what we have here tonight. The birth pains have begun. Bow your head with me as we pray. Father, please open our minds again and open our understanding again as we true on your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I stumbled on this text. I don't know if you have ever seen this text. Stumble on this text. Written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Rome. And he used a terminology that was fascinating. Romans 8, 22 by the way, we're just going to spend a little time. I'm going to send you home early tonight. Spend a little time just to chew on a piece of prophecy here. Romans 8.22. It says, We know. That's Paul. We know. What do we know, Paul? Well, we know that the whole creation has been what? Groaning as in the pains of what? childbirth right up to the present time. <laughs> Paul thought that you knew that, but did you? Ah, Paul says, we know. Oh, Paul, you, you may have known, but I'm not too sure whether the folks in Nairobi knew. Knew what? knew that the whole cre did you know that the whole creation has been what groaning as in the pains of childbirth did you know that the whole creation is groaning like a woman in labor 
Did you know that? And by the way, why does Paul use the terminology pains of childbirth? Why use labor pain? The whole creation is groaning like a woman in labor pain. Right up to the present time. I wish I could wake up Paul out of his grave and tell him, Brother Paul, if you thought the creation was groaning in your days, you should listen to the groaning now. Ah. Amen? If, if in his days, um, and that was about AD 64, somewhere up there, if in his days he thought the creation was groaning, what would he say about it now? This present time. So I was fascinated by that text. Here's another text that fascinated me. Uh, and Paul, again, to the church at Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 3. He's speaking about the second coming of Christ. Let no man deceive you about that day, Paul says. And then he says, For when they say, what? Peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as what? as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. Paul again is using the terminology labor pain to describe the coming of Christ. Whoa. Where does he get that idea from? Well, stay with me. Let me unpack this little piece for you. Fascinating stuff. In Matthew 24, Matthew 24, if you're ever looking for a chapter that is concentrated on signs of the end of the world, you have to go Matthew 24. Matthew, the entire Matthew 24 and 25 are concerned about the second coming of Christ. So in Matthew 24, verse 3, the text says, now as Jesus, he sat on Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him, how? Privately. Disciples came to him privately. And you'll soon know why they came privately. Saying, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now, I want you to look on the text because... On the text, here's something you need to take note. The disciples asked Jesus for two things. Can you identify the two? Yes, one. Tell us, when will these, these things be? That's one. And then, while you're at it, they said, and, and also tell us when, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. So there are the two things they asked Jesus about. When will these things be? Well, for you to understand what they meant by these things, when will these things be? For you to understand what that question meant, meant you have to go back to the first verse. We were in verse 3. I'm going to start the chapter at verse 1. See, this is when, Matthew 24, verse 1. This is how it started. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. He left the temple. By the way, for those of you theologians in the, in the congregation, this is Jesus' last visit to the temple. Not, not too often you see him in that visit, in that temple. Um, the last time we saw him there, he had some whip beating out people. You remember that stuff? Yeah, whipping some people out of the temple. Now, this is the last visit he made to the temple. And in this visit... He really went on bad. Mm -hmm. you, you never see Jesus going on bad yet. You need to read verse 20, chapter 23. He was angry with those folks who were in the temple. He said, you all are a generation of vipers. He, he really was angry with them. Read it, read it. You can, you can, you can hear it. He really tell them off. Big and proper. They were all, he said, you're all a bunch of hypocrites. You are like whitewash sepulchers. You look good on the outside, but inside you're filled with dead man's bones. 
So he had a, he really to, told them off on that last visit. And when he was finished with them, because they were all a bunch of hypocrites, when he was finished with them, he walked out and the 12 disciples walked out behind him. And while they, were, and while they departed the temple, the disciples came, came uh, his disciples came um, and showed him the building. The disciples came and said, Lord, look at, look at this, these buildings. Uh, look how marvelous they are. Look how grandeur they are. And Jesus said, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be what? Thrown down. In other words, Jesus says, you see this beautiful temple that the Jews are going around, are behaving as if it is the best thing in town? I am telling you, not a single stone will be left. In other words, what Jesus is saying, I am now telling you, this temple will be completely and utterly destroyed. Whoa! It shocked the disciples. It shocked the disciples. Everybody remained quiet because they were shocked by Jesus. Are you, are you telling us that the temple in Jerusalem is going to be destroyed? And they, they were all stunned. And so they kept quiet because this is not something you can talk aloud, let the folks hear. This will, this will get you killed. So they kept quiet. And when they went on Mount Olivet, they left the temple and they went all up on Mount Olivet. And when they were up there, that's why they came how? Privately, precisely. Because they don't want the crowd to hear that. So they came privately and they pick up the story. They said, Lord, when will these things be? The destruction of the temple. And while you're at it, tell us also what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age or the end of the world. So it is two things they ask Jesus. So anytime you take up Matthew 24 and reading the prophecy, you must understand that the, whatever you see there has dual application. Are we together? Primarily, it goes for the destruction of the temple, but secondarily and most importantly, it applies to the end of the world. Are we together? Yeah. Having said that, so now, if we go there, let's, let's unpack, unpack the first piece. It's not significant or it's not important for us, but just to give us context, let's put, when will these things be? Well, well, prior to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, some stuff happened. There was a series of severe famines, because Jesus mentioned that, during the reign of Claudius from AD 41 to 54, that's in the book of Acts 11, there were, there were some of the same signs that Jesus mentioned. Uh, there was also a series of major earthquakes between AD 31 and AD 70. Yeah? These hit the cities, cities like Crete, cities like Rome, cities like Phrygia and Campana. The dates are all there. All these things that Jesus says would happen, they happen before the destruction of Jerusalem. There were also reported severe hurricanes and storm in AD 65, according to the SDA Bible commentary, very much there, page 497. And so when you, look, when you put it together, you realize that these signs foreshadowed the destruction of Jerusalem, so too the very same set of signs foreshadow the end of the world and the second coming of Christ. Is the church still with me? That's why they are important. So now we're going to go take a deep dive into it. So take, for example, this new term everybody, everybody using. What's the term? Climate change. Everybody using climate change. Well, I checked Bible and I didn't see any climate change. I didn't see that terminology in Bible. But if, if climate change is affecting the entire globe, it is big enough to be in Bible. Yes? Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yes. So I began to wonder, could it be that what the scientists are just now seeing that they call climate change, that that is exactly what Christ has been predicting over 2,000 years ago? Is it possible? Well, well let's, let's dig a little deeper. Here is, here is the prophecy in Matthew 24. 
that we were talking about. I'm in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7. Let's read together. One, two, let's read like kindergarten children. One, two, three. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, yes. See that you are not troubled, okay. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I'm in verse 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Uh -huh, take your time now. And there will be famines and what else? Pestilences and what else? Earthquakes in various places. That's what the text. But the text says, the text says, no, notice it start with war. Have you seen that? Yes, you notice it starts with war. You shall hear of war, rumors of war. Verse 7, nation shall rise against nation and there will be famine. So war is, is every day on our television news. Now is war. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yep, uh, we, we're just coming out of two world wars, right? And now everybody is nervous that World War number three may just about to start. And so governments across the land are doing all that they possibly can to prevent World War three from starting. And so war is on everybody's agenda. Uh-huh, huge war. All over this place there is war. Yep. And so the, the latest one is, is the war between Ukraine and Russia, nobody saw that coming, really. And while that is being played out, if you check the Pentagon, they are concerned about another one. That's between China and Taiwan. Because in the very same way, Brother Putin, Mr. Putin, decided that he needs to take Ukraine by force, is the very same way Mr. Chi, Chinese president, decided that he wants to take Taiwan by force. So if Putin gets, if Putin gets the, his opportunity to walk into another country and take it over by force, and Chinese uh, Xi Jinping take the opportunity to walk in and take Taiwan by force, then I guarantee you another leader is looking at another country to say, if these two can get through, maybe I can get through too. War. And if you, if you are not following what's going on with the war, check your son video game. The video game industry is now a multi-billion dollar interest industry and the number one genere of types of game is war. That's what sells video game. So while you may think all is well at home, your son or your daughter is very much learning war games. And nobody, nobody makes a connection between that and prophecy. Right in your home, war. Well, here's what your Bible says. And there will be famines. That word and connects the war with the famine. Is the church still with me? Yes, 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 yes. Notice that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because famine normally follows war. Is the church there? Famine has always been a feature in the history of God's people. Yep. You will remember that God also used famine as a means of judgment for his people in, um, in 2 Kings 8. Yep, Elijah, just preached about that last week. Elijah locked down heaven for three and a half years and there was famine. So, so famine has always been used in the Bible. It should be no surprise then that famines are again used to indicate the end of the journey of God's people. Yep, you will remember uh, uh, um, Abraham had to go down to Egypt because there was famine. Have you read that stuff? Did you read it? Yes, and Jacob had to take his 12 sons down in Egypt because there was famine. And I asked myself the question, how is it that Egypt always have food and the promised land don't? Have you ever thought about it? They always have to go to Egypt to get food. Why, why no food in the promised land? Mm, that's a question I have written down to ask God when he comes. 
But note, famine follows war. So if there's going to be war, there's going to be famine. 1989 was one of the big famine around the place, but now this is the big trouble because not only is war bringing famine, but climate change is also bringing famine. Yep, and, and, and the warring factions, warring factions causing displacement of individuals. And people are asking, can there really be famine at a time like this when there are mega farms? That are, that are using mega industries that are producing hundreds and thousands of pounds of food? Can they, are we really going to see famine? Well, well, here's what the United Nations Task Force on Global Food and Nutrition Security says. According to them, the latest available estimates indicate that about 821 million people in the world were undernourished in 2018, undernourished, one in nine people do not get enough food to be healthy and lead an active life. And hunger and malnutrition are the biggest risk to health worldwide, greater than AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. Ooh. Food shortage, food insecurity. The same tax force report, it is estimated that over two billion people do not have regular access to safe, nutritious, sufficient food, including 8% of the population in North America and Europe. And Africa is a region with the highest percentage, almost 20%, food shortage. And now, one of the things that is concerning to people in management is whether the Ukraine war is going to lead to another major famine. So even as we speak, Bible prophecy is opening up before us. That was one. The second thing Jesus said we will see before he comes is what? Pestilence. Well, the word pestilence is not in my vocabulary. That we don't use pest. We don't use. I don't know if you guys use it here in, in Nairobi, but we don't use the word pestilence. If you if you said pestilence, some people are not even too sure what you're talking about. But 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 pestilence. Um, here's the text: For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, and then there'll be pestilence. What is that? What is that? In Bible, the terminology is used a few times in Bible. Here's Exodus 19, verse 15. Now, if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. When God sent the ten plagues down in Egypt, they were referred to as what? Pestilence. Yes, pestilence are plagues, plagues, diseases. Here's Jeremiah 21, verse 6. I will strike the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of what? Pestilence. Yes, these are, these are diseases. These are plagues that, by the way, these are not necessarily man-made. They tend, whether, 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 whether they manufacture them in labs or not, they can only come at the permission of God. Are, we to, are they church with me? Yes, they can only come at the permission of God. Pestilences, diseases. This is coronavirus that I thought was gone but is still lingering up to August 6th this year. 6,954,336 people have died from this disease, says the World Health Organization. And I'm wondering who is connecting that to the prophecy. Um, we, we have gone through, through an unprecedented stage. And it's not just coronavirus. Before it, there was SARS. And by the way, a lot of people forget one of the worst pestilence that ever come across human being. And up to now, it cannot be cured. It's cancer. In 2020, 9.9 .9 million people died from cancer. Hey, hey, hey. 
Coronavirus, 6.9 million, and we locked down the entire world for coronavirus. But cancer, 9.9 .9 million, and the world continues. And the question is, who is connecting this to Bible, to the prophecy, to the prophecy? I'm going back into the text, verse 7. There's a whole lot of stuff in it. Jesus says, not only will you see wars, not only will you see, will you see uh, famines, not only will you see diseases that shock the whole world, but before I come, there will be earthquakes. Where? Where? In various places. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> earthquakes, earthquakes. Fascinating stuff. I want you to note, earthquakes are much more popular known and associated with divine judgment. Yes, sir, says the book of Joel, Joel 2 verse 10. And take note, take note, take note. Earthquakes, earthquake was, a, was used to close Christ's ministry. On Friday evening when he died, the Bible said there was a great earthquake. In fact, it even wake up, it even split some of the tombs that were there and some of the folks that were, that were buried. So, there was an earthquake to close his ministry, but there was one on Sunday morning when he rose. Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when he rose on Sunday morning. So, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, there's one to close his ministry on earth, and there's another one to open his new ministry, which is the ministry in heaven. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. By the way, where, where did Jesus say the earthquakes would happen? Huh? Various places all over the world. It has become, it has become, it has become a popular happening. We just had one of the worst ones in Turkey and in Syria and in Mexico and in Haiti and in various parts of the world. I am, I wouldn't have enough time to list the countries that are affected by earthquake. So I stumbled when I was researching for my book, I stumbled on a site put together by Noah. And that gave us, watch me, that gave us a little understanding of how earthquakes have been frequent in the last days. Now, if you're sleeping, take a deep breath. If you're sleeping, take a, and if your neighbor is sleeping, wake them up. Take a deep breath. I'm going to play this little video for you. And you will, and when you finish, you will tell me whether you think God is coming or not. It's going to show you earthquakes way back in the 1900, how frequent it was then, and track the frequency and the intensity of it up to our time. Are you ready for it? Yes. By the way, where was earthquake supposed to be again? Various places. Let me, let, let's see if this thing works. If this thing works, then you're in, you're in good business. Okay? Let's see if it works. Okay, it looks as if it's, look like you're in business. Global earthquake animation, 20th century. It's loading, here it goes. Now, I'm going to put a pause on it. I'm going to put a pause on it. I, I want you to notice what year it is. What year? 1902. Can you see that? Yes. So those red spots are the earthquakes that happened on the entire planet in 1902. Is the church with me? Yes, because what you're looking there is the entire world. That's the map of the entire world. So in 1902, how many earthquakes you saw there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Now, 
as time passes on, the year number will change and you will see the frequency of earthquakes in some colored dots. Are you with me? Yes. And then those earthquakes that cause a tsunami, you'll see a big flash of marv or purple. A big flash of purple. It means that's a tsunami that came from that earthquake. So you're going to see that as well, as well as you're going to see the frequency of earthquakes before you were born. By the way, anybody here born 1902? No. Why you laugh at me? Okay. <laughs> okay. Before, before you were born, right, you're going to watch this thing. And then you'll tell me whether the Bible is fulfilling. Are you ready for this? Okay. So let's go. Let's roll the tape. Let's roll the tape. So 1905, 07. Don't know why it's gone dim. Hang on, let's see. Let's see if we can get it back. For you. Let's watch again. 1901, 1902, 4, 05. Oh, it's gone dim. Anyway, you can see it still. 10, 11, 12, 1913, 1914. 17, 19, all those pops are earthquakes. All those pops, 1924, 25, those pops are earthquakes. 1930, okay, here we go, 33, all those pops are earthquakes. Every light flash is an earthquake. Every light flash is an earthquake. Every light flash is an earthquake. As we travel in time, watch earthquakes. Watch earthquakes. Watch earthquakes. I mean, 1974, 75. 77, watch earthquakes. The entire world is lit up. 83, 84, 85, 86. Watch earthquakes. 89, 90. And we're still rolling. And we're still rolling to 2000. Look at earthquakes. How many were in 1902? Six. We could only find six. Um, and I asked myself the question, do the scientists at NOAA connect what they're seeing with the word of God? Who is advising government? Who is reading the Bible and giving government advice? Are they connecting it? Nobody. So what happened to the church? Those who study the prophecy. Because what we're seeing, oh, let me come out of this. Yeah, what we're seeing is prophecy fulfilling. So when you saw Turkey got devastated and, and Syria got devastated and you are in Nairobi and say oh my I'm sorry for those people I want you to connect it to say yes Lord you are on your way the church has to understand what is happening and warn the town and tell the people these things are not just happening by accident these are prophecies fulfilling in our very eyes they're not happening by accident. These are prophecies fulfilling in our very eyes. The last one I'll share with you tonight is this one. It's not in Matthew 24. It's in a little book called Luke. I haven't heard anybody mention in this, but this is a big one. Here's it. I'm in Luke 21, 25. And there will be, help me read, there are about 
eight ver I mean three verses put together and here's what Jesus said. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. We'll talk about that one of the evenings coming. And on the earth, I think about Friday evening or somewhere there. And on the earth, distress of nation. Is that true so far? On the earth? Oh yes, oh yes. Then he says, with what? Perplexity. Then come these words. The sea and the waves roaring. Hang on. What? What does that mean? When you read Bible, when you read Bible and Jesus is prophesying his second coming, these are signs before his second coming. And you see the sea and the waves roaring. What does that have to do with the second coming? You can't pass that stuff. You need to stop and ask, what does that have to do? What does it mean by the sea and the wave roaring? Well, verse 26 says, Men's heart failing them from fear and the expectations of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Here's it put together now in verse 27. Then they will, then they will see the Son of Man coming in, in a cloud with power and great glory now when these things begin to happen when these things when these which things these sea and waves roaring <laughs> and all and distress a nation when you see these things happening the text Jesus says you must do what look up and lift up your head why redemption draweth night so the question I ask you question in Nairobi what's the connection between Jesus is coming and the sea and waves roaring. That's the connection. That's in the little package here. Well, because you don't have any sea in Nairobi, you overlook it. Yeah? Where I live, I can't overlook it. I live in the Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands is three little islands in the Caribbean Sea. Yeah, if I walk this way for a couple of minutes, I'm in the sea. And if I walk this way for a few minutes, I'm in the sea. If I turn this direction for a few minutes, I'm in the sea. The island is seven miles wide and about 21 or 22 miles long. So, anywhere I go, the sea, when I wake up in the morning, I can smell the sea. When, if the sea is rough, I can hear the waves from my, from my house. Is the church with me? Yes, 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 yes. So, I can't overlook this. <laughs> Amen. When you are, you're in a big, you're in a big continent, there ain't no sea around you. So you overlook this, but I can't overlook this. It says, one of the things I must look for just before Jesus come is something happening to the sea and the waves. Without doubt, the prophetic eye of Christ saw Way down the road, the catastrophic force of nature manifested in the sea. In fact, what Christ was identifying here is what we now call hurricanes, tsunamis, cyclones, and sea level rising. For us who live in the Cayman Islands, hurricanes are a regular part of our life. How many of you ever been through a hurricane? One hand and the one hand came from the Cayman Islands. For you, you know, you, you have no clue what a hurricane is. The Lord bless you. Trust me, you don't want to experience it. You don't. You don't. How many of you have ever been through a tsunami? You don't want to experience it. In Mombasa, you may have it. Yeah, yeah. Floods. Oh, you have floods. But they're not bad floods, are they? What Jesus saw in the last days will be floods. Will be... We, we, if you watch your television just the other day, 
half of the world is burning while the other half is in flood. Is the church with me? Flood at an unprecedented level. Hey, uh -uh, tsunamis. This is, this is 2011 in, in, in Japan. Tsunamis. Tsunamis caused by earthquake in the sea that, that, that carry the whole ocean. When that comes, it takes everything in its path. We have seen just two of them in recent times. One in Tsunami in Southeast Asia. This is one in Southeast Asia that killed 300,000 and, and 2004. And the one in uh, Japan in 2011. This is what Jesus saw. Tornadoes. Tornadoes, if you live anywhere in the southern part of the United States, tornadoes is your biggest enemy. Every year, people are destroyed by tornadoes. Hurricanes, yeah, that's where we are worried. We have a, what we now call a hurricane season. Next month, the month of September, is our most feared month because that's the prime of hurricane season. And when hurricane comes, it takes out everything. F destructive force you'll never imagine. Hey, wildfires. I was living in California. Half of it was burning in wildfires. And by the way, you don't have to live in California. Just a couple of weeks ago, the entire Europe seemed to be on fire. Did you watch that stuff? Australia on fire. Greece on fire. In fact, I was watching DW story, and they looked, they said, they, they said somebody came on you and said, the whole Europe on fire. France had fire, Italy had fire, Greece had fire, Algeria had fire, Turkey had fire, even England had fire. Why? Last month was a July, was the hottest month since men started keeping record. So something is happening, and my trouble is that this, the pulpit is silent on this matter. Why? Hey, 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 the prophecies are, the prophecies are opening like popcorn. You guys know popcorn? Yeah, they're opening like popcorn all over. And nobody is connecting to that to say, we are at the end. So what's happening? Let me help you. Let me make sense of what happened and then send you home. That's what happened. Go back to the text. The text says, Matthew 24, 7, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. I'm in verse 7, y'all. I'm in verse 7. Matthew 24, I'm in verse 7. Look at the text. Maybe you didn't see this before, but I'm going to connect the two dots for you, the, the dots for you now. Verse 7, Jesus says, before I come back on planet earth, before the world end, what will usher in my coming, what will signal to all government, if government people watching, what will signal to all government on the planet that the world is coming to an end. Verse 7, they will arise against nation, against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, tick it off. There will be pestilences, tick it off. There will be earthquakes in various places, tick it off. That's verse 7. Now, holy breath, I'm going to verse 8. Verse 8. Read for me. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Oh. That does not mean anything to the choir. So choir members, I'm going to disturb your soul right now. That verse, look at it. All these things, what things? What things? The famine, the earthquakes, the pestilence. The tsunami, the tornadoes, all the craziness that scientists are calling climate change. Here's it in Bible. All these things are what? The beginning of sorrow. Which word in verse 8 is giving you trouble? Which word do you need to know? Sorrow. Sorrow. What is that? All these things are the beginning of something. 
Hey, 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 hey. All these, let me talk to the people online. All these things, this crazy thing that is happening around the world. Half of the world is burning, half is in flood. Famines and pestilences and coronavirus and cancers and diseases. All these things are the beginning of something. What's that thing? Sorrow. What does that mean, preacher? Oh, I'm glad you ask. I'm going to tell you what it means. I'm going to let Bible decode Bible. Are you ready for this? Take a deep breath. That word sorrow is the same word found in Genesis chapter 63. Genesis 3 verse 16. The only difference is up there it is Hebrew. Down in New Testament it's Greek. But it's the same word. Oh, let's go read verse 16 of chapter 3 in Genesis. Here's it. To the, come on, help me read. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your what? Oh, that's the word we're looking for. Hello. That's the word we're looking for. And your conception, for in pain you shall bring forth what? Aha. Uh -huh. So read my lips. That word sorrow means birth pain. Does that make sense to you now? It means what? Birth pain, or what some people call labor pain. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. It means birth pain. It means labor pain. That's why Paul said the whole creation is groaning as if it is in labor pain. Yes, 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 yes. So, so hang on, preacher. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Um, I'm running out of time, but let me, let me wrap this up for you. So, so, so what does this mean? Earthquakes, tsunamis. Tidal waves, you name it, pestilences and famine and all the crazy thing that is happening around that cause scientists to be going mad. What is they call climate change? Jesus says, no, 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 no. Those are birth pains. Those are labor pains. Hang on, Jesus. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If those are labor pain, we have a question. Who is pregnant? Who is giving birth? Ah, bring in Brother Paul. The whole creation is groaning as uh, in labor pain. So who is pregnant? Mother Earth is giving birth Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. When a cow gives birth, what does it give birth to? Another cow. Am I right? Am I not right? And when a dog gives birth, give birth to another dog. Am I correct? Yeah. When a human being gives birth, what does it give birth to? Another human being. So when earth gives birth, what does it give birth to? Ah, give yourself a round of applause. Mother Earth is currently pregnant. And, the, and by the way, it's late stage pregnancy. It's about to give birth. Is the church with me? The labor pain has begun. So hold on your breath now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I tell you the other day that I learned something about pregnancy? You remember me telling you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with my wife's permission, I'm going to share what I learned about pregnancy. Hey, by the way, all of you married men are supposed to know this too. If you don't know it, I'm telling your wife, don't give them any dinner tonight. They're supposed to know it. Two things I know about pregnancy. One, about labor pain. One, one. La and ladies, you can tell me if I'm wrong. Is that all right? Yeah, if I'm wrong, just put up your hand and say, no preacher, you're wrong. I give you permission to do that. So I learned two, <laughs> I learned two things about labor pain. One, one is, um, it starts, when it starts, get some contraction now, and then there's a gap, 
a little ease, and then another contraction. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Am I correct so far? Am I doing well so far? Yes, 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 yes. So, so there's, there's some space between the contractions. Are we together? Yes, that's when it just starts. But the closer you get to the point of delivery, what happened? The contraction becomes more frequent. Am I doing well so far? Am I correct so far? Yeah, man, then tell me yet. Yeah, man, don't let me look like I don't know what I'm saying. The closer you get to the point of delivery, the contraction becomes more frequent. Is that true? Good. Good, good, good. So therefore, so therefore, let's apply that to Mother Earth, who is now having contraction. It means if these things that we see are contraction, then the closer we get to the coming of Christ, we're going to see more earthquakes, more famine, more tornadoes, more disaster, on a more frequent basis. Is the church with me? And there's nothing scientists on earth can do to stop it because Mother Earth is giving birth. So if you think you see disaster as yet, hold your breath. If that is not true, the Bible is wrong. Oh, that's one thing I learned about labor pain. The other thing I learned about labor pain. I was there when my wife giving birth, so I know. The other thing I know about labor pain is that when it starts, you feel it. Not too bad. Not too bad. But the closer you get to the point of delivery is the more intense the pain. True or false? True or false? Let the people around the world hear you. True or false? True! So, so, so hang on, hang on. If that is true, then the closer we get to the coming of Christ, earthquakes will no longer be 5.4, 6.3. No, 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 no. They'll be 8 point something, 9 point something. They'll break the wrist of scale. Is the church with me? That's why that's why. earthquake will be coming larger. Hurricane will be coming stronger. Uh, tornadoes will be coming more and more. The, the, the destruction will be more frequent and more devastating because earth is giving. I wish I could tell the scientists that. But nobody listen to our old preacher. Because, because we believe in Bible, we don't have any sense. So, <laughs> hey, 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 the United Nations wouldn't even ask for a spiritual advisor. Because I would volunteer. Because everything is here. So people around the world watching, we will have many more disasters, worse than we possibly could entertain. That's why everybody's frightened about the intensities of the fires that they have seen blazing, the intensity of the earthquake in Turkey, the intensity of this. There will be more. And, and by the way, you folks sitting down in Nairobi, don't think you will be spared. Don't think you'll be spared because the word of God is being fulfilled. Planet Earth giving birth to a new Earth. Brand new Earth. Before our very eyes. You and I live at the time when planet Earth is giving birth to a new Earth. Oh, the Bible did prophesy it. Here is Jeremiah. For behold, I create what? New heavens and a new earth. And the former thing shall not be remembered or come to mind. If you miss it in Jeremiah, uh, in Isaiah, you'll find it down in Revelation 21, verse 1. Here's the text says, Then I saw what? New heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more See, 
the Bible prophesied there will be a new earth and the signs of the time telling me we are in the process of changing over. How many of you, how many of you have put yourself in a position to be part of the new earth? How do I? I'm finished. How do we become part of the new earth? How do I ensure that I be part of the new earth? Answer. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. To be part of the new earth, you have to ensure that you give your heart to the Lord. You have to ensure that you get baptized. Hear me, hear me, hear me out. I'm, this is my last point. Yeah, this is my last point. Is there a registered general department here? Birth and death. Am I correct? Yes. When you give birth to a child, you register the child there. Am I correct? Yes. If the child is not registered there, then they are not a citizen. Is the church with me? In that new earth, if you are not registered in the kingdom of God, you are not part of that new earth. How many of you, how many of you are sure you already registered for the new earth? Just one, two. Oh, this is trouble. How many of you are sure that you have already registered for the new earth? That when God comes in this new earth, you will be in the number. How many of you are sure I have already registered? My name is up there. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm sure. 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 I'm registered. My name is up there. Because I have given the Lord, Lord my life in baptism. Amen. Some hands are. Those of you whose hands are up, stand for me. Stand for me. Oh, you guys use the word rise. Rise. If you are sure, Lord, come bring the new earth. Bring the new earth. Because I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. My name is up there. If you check the registration list in the new earth, my name is up there. Check, check it, Lord. Check it twice. Because my name is up there. I am sure. I am very sure. I'm very sure. Okay. So, this is a strange call. This is a strange call. All of you who are standing, you are sure, all of you who are standing, this call is for you. Can I ask you to join me up here? Come on. All of you standing, come all of you standing, come. Join me up here. The rest of you seated, remain seated. Fill up here, you can fill up here, use up my altar. Fill up here, fill up here. Fill up the whole place, fill up the whole place. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. Yeah, and we're, fill up, fill up the whole area, fill up the whole area. Fill up, you can fill up here, you can fill up here. The beautiful city of God. Come on, fill up here, fill up here. The hills of oh, Zion, Zion hills of Zion. Fill up here, fill up here, fill up here. Fill up here. Come on, come on now, fill up here, fill up here, fill up here. 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 Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, Walk the, the golden streets, so oh, walk the golden streets. Oh, we're marching on to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching up to heavenly Zion, the beautiful city of God. Go. 
question what it is that makes some feel short that their name is registered in the Lamb's Book of Life they are citizen from the new earth what it is that make these folks feel short even though that they may be sinners like all of us, what it is that make them feel sure, and what it is that make the rest of us not so sure. So all week I have been working on trying to ensure that all of God's children have the joy, like the Apostle Paul, to believe that there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. All week I've been working to send a message to everybody in Nairobi that no matter what your situation, even if you are a fugitive like Jonah, a terrorist like Paul, a harlot like Rahab, whoever you are, I want you to get the message. <clears throat> the God that accepts these folks with their weaknesses and their blunders and their situation is also prepared to accept you. I want you to leave with the assurance. I don't want you to have any doubt in your mind. So if you have not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, if that is the reason that you have not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I want it to go on record as it is being done by these women. And I want you to hear me say, do it now. If you have not yet given your heart to the Lord in baptism, Sabbath morning coming will be our next baptism. Angels in heaven will be standing by. At, I wish I had longer time to preach with you. At baptism, you know, the Bible says baptism is birth. It's the second birth. So just as how you register your child when it is born down here. When you are baptized, God register you up there because you are born in his kingdom. You become a candidate for the new earth. Is the church with me? The minute you get baptized, you become a candidate for the new earth for your name is registered up there and God has that list and when he comes he will call the roll up yonder and if your name is on the list to God be the glory the only way to get it on the list give your heart to the Lord in baptism Sabbath morning coming will be our next baptism a number of people have already signed up they had a class at 2 o'clock this, e this evening and we're preparing folk because that's the purpose of the church. And why am I spending my time and laboring this point? Answer, because planet Earth is about to give birth. You don't have time left. You don't have time left. The labor pains already started the labor pains already started so this should be priority number one in your life before any girlfriend any boyfriend any husband any job any situation this is because when that day come ain't no job ain't no family ain't nobody gonna be important to you right now than you save your soul so I want to I want to end by asking you 
I am assuming the rest of us down there fall and up on the balcony fall in two categories, one of two categories. One, either you have not yet been baptized, or maybe you were baptized and you are backslidden from your church. Category number one. Those of you who fall yourself in that category, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. God has brought you in this church tonight so that you can hear this message tonight. The labor pains have begun. If you stay down there and let Sabbath morning baptism passes you, your blood is on your head because I've discharged my responsibility. I'm asking you, don't take that risk. In the name of Jesus, come. If you have not yet given your heart to the Lord, I'm going to invite you to come. Join these happy folks. Come. If you have not yet given your heart to the Lord and you plan to do so, come. Come, come. Join these folks. Come. Come, 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 come. Join these folks by grace. Says this coming Sabbath, I am making that decision to give my heart to the Lord. God bless you, my daughter. Come, come. I am not putting nothing. God bless you. 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 Come, 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 come. God bless you. God bless you. Come, come, come. From the balcony, come. If you're in category number one, come. Come, come, come. Come, category number one, come. The labor pain has started. People, the labor pain starts. The labor pain starts. The labor pain has begun. Come. This coming Sabbath, the labor pain has begun. You're on the balcony, say excuse and come. Is there anybody else? Where am I? God, I see you coming. I see you coming. Praise the Lord, I see you coming. This coming Sabbath, I am going to put my name down on the list. I'm going to put my name down on the list. I'm going to put my name down on the list. I'm going to join the people of God. God bless you. I'm going to join the people of God. I'm going to join the people of God. God bless you. This coming Sabbath. I'm going to God bless you. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. God bless you. Come on up. This coming Sabbath. Labor pain has started. Come on up. 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 Bring the pastor. Bring her this side. Pastor, bring her this side. Bring her this side. Bring her this side. Labor pain has started. Is there another? God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Come on up. 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 God bless you. 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 Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Labor pain has started. Labor pain started. This coming Sabbath. I'm going to surrender my life. Get my name up here. Labor pain has started. God bless you, God bless you. This coming Sabbath. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Labor pain has started. Is there another? 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 Labor pain stop. Thousand sacred Yeah, one more. I don't know. Yeah, one more. 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 Labor pain has stopped. Oh, 
come on, people of God, we are marching. Seated. I'm just curious, how many of you have already been baptized? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Amen. 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 Most, not all of you. Which tells me there is something why you are not too sure. You and God know what that is. I don't need to know. That is between you and God. What I want, however, is for you to get peace in your soul. An assurance. Assurance from God. That you'll be okay. I want you to leave here with the assurance. Whatever it is, you know, sometimes we have ups and downs. Maybe if I'd asked this question two months ago, some of people up here would be down there and some people down there would be up here. We understand the journey. But whatever it is, I want you to understand this one thing. God is more interested in you being saved than you are interested in yourself being saved. God has a vested interest in you being saved. That's why he makes a sacrifice to send his son. God will do everything and anything possible to save you. So whatever, since you have made that commitment with him, Whatever it is, I would like to challenge you. Go back and have a little talk with him. Say, God, I have made this decision. For some strange reason, I am not sure about my soul's salvation. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And I'm asking you one more time. To forgive me for all my mistakes and my blunders. Cleanse me. Like David, wash me with hyssop. Cleanse me. Renew the right mind. I'm asking you, go back and have a little talk with Jesus. Surrender to him again. Hand over yourself to him again. And when you are finished, I want you to get up off your knees and believe with all your heart that God has forgiven you. Are we together? Are we together on that? Yes. And live it because he has forgiven you. So I'm going to pray with you. I am going to pray with you. I'm going to ask my pastor to either pray or find one of the other pastors to pray for these folks up here. But I'm going to pray with you. So I'm going to invite you to stand with me. I'm going to pray with you. And the, the spirit, I want, I want to be obedient to the spirit. Spirit just dropped something inside of me and I want to be obedient to the spirit. 
This is how the Lord moves. Is there somebody down there? Could it be that there's somebody down there? You perhaps was baptized already, maybe in this church or another church or somehow. But based on your current situation and your current connection with God, you have a sense that you need to be recommitted in baptism and to start your journey again. If that describes you, God is asking you to come. The Lord is asking you to come. Maybe you were baptized before. I don't know who it is. I don't know you. But the Lord is saying, come. Maybe you were baptized before. You know your situation. You know your connection with God. And you feel deep within your soul that for you to make it to the kingdom of God, you need to reconnect. You need to start moving. If that describe you, come. Come before I pray. silence of the moment come this is where God speaks to your soul come says, God I need I need I need I need I need to start God bless you God bless you I need Earth pains are happening. I need you know yourself, brethren. I don't know you, but what you know between you and God, maybe you were baptized before, and like Peter, the devil is after you. Jesus, say, I pray for you. Come, 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 step out of your seat. If that describe your situation, come. Step out of your seat and come. Come. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Come home. God has his wands wide open. Come home. Make that step this coming Sabbath morning. The church has organized this baptism for Camp Meeting 23 to ensure that all of Nairobi's members are going home. If there are issues, if there are stuff, if there are circumstances that pose a challenge, come. Don't look over your shoulder. Come. It says, God, I need to make this recommitment. I need to start this over. I'm not going to stop trying. God bless you. I'm not going to stop trying. Come. Come. God bless you. God bless you. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Pastor, receive them. Come on up. Receive them, Pastor, on that side. Receive them, Pastor, on that side. Come on up. 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 She's here now that come home. Oh, come home. Must be obedient to the Spirit. Here now that He who are weary, tired of fighting, Jesus. Tired of fighting. Come home. Calling, Come home. Calling, calling oh. Come. Thank you so much. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Lord, when you come, there will be two groups of people, the sheep and the goats. 
some on the right, some on the left, the saved and the lost. We will fall in one of these two groups. And if you search our hearts, you will see that none of us in church today, including those online, none of us want to fall in the wrong group, in the wrong class. And so, Lord, that's the reason we took a decision to give our hearts to you in baptism. We made sacrifices in our lives to live for you. We resist temptation. We resist the world to live according to your will so that when you come, we can be in the number. So God, even in this church tonight, there is standing in their seats, in the pews, your sons and your daughters who have already made a commitment in baptism, some who have already started their walk with you, already your disciple, like Peter, but are experiencing some difficult moments, some trials, some tribulation, some setbacks, God find themselves in a position where for whatever the reason they are not too sure God about their soul salvation and as they listen to the message tonight and get a sense that the earth is coming to its close because the labor pain has begun then the need to feel safe is heightened in their souls and tonight as they stand they want relief of the fear that they will not make it. They want assurance. Merciful Father, I am asking you, breathe upon them your Holy Spirit tonight. That they can feel your forgiving power. That they can know that whatever it is that caused doubt in their relationship, it is forgiven and wiped away. Give them a peace of mind that they never experienced before so that they can go home and sing knowing that when you come, they'll be in the number. So Lord, take care of them, I pray, because they love you. You are their God. They're just having some Peter moments. But the same way you forgave Peter and restore Peter and pour out your Holy Spirit on Peter and bless Peter and use Peter, I pray that you will do the same for these tonight. And it is my hope and my prayer that when we go over in the new earth, we will meet everyone standing in the pew because they will be in the number. This is my prayer I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take the second prayer, Pastor. All those who have come forward are marching to Zion and those who will join them come Sabbath morning to expand the kingdom of God. Just before we pray, I'm just having a feeling there are some people standing here who are not baptized and they feel they are not ready for baptism. Amen. Could be one or two, but I feel Somebody is here this evening is not baptized. He's hearing the call for baptism this Sabbath, but they feel they are not ready for this Sabbath. Maybe because of how you look at your life or the things expect ahead of you here, you're just feeling even though this call is important, it's not now. Is there such a person? 
if you're there, you can raise up your hand because I wish to take your names so that we can put you in a special prayer group to pray with you that whatever challenge is there, the Lord may remove it for next time for you to be in the number of those who, who do be baptized. Is there such a person? You can raise up your hand. Our ushers will come there and take your name. You are not baptized for whatever reason and you feel you are not ready for the Sabbath. Are you there? Anyone? Just raise up your hand. We will take your name for special prayers. Is there anyone? Anyone? I can see a hand there. Just, just, just raise your hands. I, I request, uh, please take those names. I can see a hand there. Is there any other hand? You're not baptized, but somehow there's something you feel you're not ready. I can see another hand here. Thank you. Just, just keep raising them. Just keep raising them. We want to have you in a special uh, prayer group that will be praying for you. I know the battle is very strong. It's not easy to break it, but the Lord is willing to fight for you. Somebody can climb up the balcony. Uh, those who are taking names quickly uh, to take the names up there. I can see hands up there. They have, let me have people run quickly there. Paul, I don't know where you are. Let's take those names. Uh, there are more hands down here. Just raise your hands. Just raise your hands. We'll take your names. We want this CAM meeting to be sure as we close our CAM meeting, everyone has an opportunity Amen. to be on the side of the Lord. So please don't fear. Don't fear. We are here and heaven is real. And Jesus, through all this CAM meeting, one thing we have seen through the messages, God will never give up on you. And so even in a struggle, we appreciate the Lord is fighting for you, but we want to join you in that battle. We may not even ask you what you're going through, but we want you to be part of our prayer. When we retreat, we will be praying for you. Say, God, remember, this person is struggling. They need to come to the fold. Any other hand? Any other person? Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand because you're about to pray now. Just raise your hand. I don't know whether those names up there have been taken. I don't see anyone taking names up there. Is, oh, there's somebody there. Okay, thank you. Just, just keep raising hands so that, so that we take your names. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will make it to heaven. Can you say amen? We will make it to heaven. No matter the struggle that we see today, we are candidates of heaven. And the Lord is on our side. I want to invite Pastor Butch to come. This team here, I know even as they stand here, they are not perfect. They have not come here because they are perfect. They have come here because they know they are in a personal relationship with Jesus. The struggle they face every day, falling and waking up, they are depending on the grace of God. And I want to ask the pastor to pray for this team so that none of these people here will miss out in the kingdom. May the heaven seal this decision that we have demonstrated here and give us a renewal, the power of the Holy Spirit to walk through this journey. And I'll pray for those who are still struggling. They are not yet baptized. They would want, wish to be baptized, but something is stopping them. They learn to be with them. We pray. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, the Creator and the Redeemer of mankind, we come to you as children come to their Father. We come to you because you are our Father. Yes, Lord. And there's no other Father we can go to except you. Yes, Lord. There's no other name we can call upon mm -hmm. except the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, you brought your son, your servant to this city, to this church, mm -hmm. to share your word. Yes, Lord. This is your work. And this, you did it 
by bringing him here. Mm. Because you had a message to reach somebody. Yes, Lord. And somebody tonight is here. Yes, Lord. A call has been made and somebody has walked to you. I lift my sisters and my brothers who have surrendered their lives to you. And they are willing to seal their decision with baptism. Mm. Father, you know each one of them. Yes, you know their fear. You know their challenges. Mm. You know their pain. You know their struggle. And because they have come to you, after you have spoken to them, Father, I request with all humility, Stretch your hand and receive each one of them. Mm. Speak to each one of them about their fear and their struggle that you have taken them over. Yes, Lord. It is no longer their battle, but it's your battle. Mm. And you'll fight it for them up to the end. Yes, Lord. I commit each one of them to you. <clears throat> Please, Father, speak to the heart of each one of them that you have forgiven them and you have accepted them and you have recorded their names in the book of life. And they are your sons and your daughter. Mm -hmm. Father, I beg in Jesus' name. Before our Savior left for heaven, mm -hmm. you said, I have to go to my father and ask my father to give you a comforter. Mm -hmm. But when a comforter comes, he will give you assurance of your salvation mm -hmm. and conviction of sin. And Lord, fill their lives with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Baptize them with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. That fear is no longer part of them. Mm -hmm. For Jesus is their Savior and for Jesus in their hearts. Yes, Lord. I pray that Lord, may you take control of their lives. Mm -hmm. May all the chains that have been holding them be broken down in Jesus' name. Mm. And Lord, I beg that may your assurance penetrate and peep into their hearts. Mm. That every time in their lives they will know they have been accepted. They know heaven is their home. Yes, and they know the new coming Jerusalem is their home. And the new city that is forthcoming, it is their city. I pray that, Lord, may this assurance fill their hearts. And may this confidence drive them. And even as they are walking towards the baptistry, as they bury their life, Father, accept each one of them and cleanse each one of them. Tonight, Father God, as they have come, there are others who are still wondering, do I go now or next time? Mm. Tomorrow may not be yours. Tonight is your night. Mm. As Nicodemus risked his life and walked out of the city and moving to the forest, mm. seeking for where Jesus is, mm. Father God, I pray for those who have not given their lives, tonight, Lord, is their night that they may come to you. Yes, Even when they have not as stepped up front here, mm. Father God, you know they have already stepped here in their hearts. Yes, Lord. Baptize them. Yes, Lord. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. And Lord, all of us who have stood here, please, Father God, baptize us anew. Mm. That when we live here, we live with a new experience. Yes, Lord. Please, Father God, thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for accepting our prayer. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Yes, Lord. And thank you for retaining our names in the book of life. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for the assurance of your word. And thank you for tonight's message. Because we ask all these things, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we are glad to have you as our God. God who has demonstrated in the history of the world that he hears his children. 
God whose name is Emmanuel. God together with us. That in the fight and the battle in this world, when the storms are raging and the war drums are beating, mm. we are not alone. Yes, Lord. When the evil and the tempter mm. masters the art of our life and the sin that so easily ensnares that and uses the every day as we try to rise and to walk with you, throwing us down, you are always there to hold us and lift us up. Like of Peter, I hear you tonight speaking to many of us and saying, the devil hacked for you, but I'm praying for you. And so even those who came up frontier, my father, whose names were written in the books of life, perhaps somebody walked in here not very sure, but said, I am taking a leap of faith. That because I know I committed myself to the Lord, my name is there. But maybe they're not very sure of the status of the name. Lord, I want to pray tonight that we may look upon us with your favor and your grace and you speak to us like you spoke to Peter. And say, even so, I have prayed for you. Amen. That that name which was written in the book of life, Lord, it may not be blotted because of what we have done, for your grace is sufficient. And you have said, Lord, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and gracious and just. Forgive us and cleanse us from all manner of unrighteousness. And this evening, my Father, in our faithfulness, we look up to you for cleansing that comes from the throne of grace. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We are your children. Just like the way we forgive our children who are struggling, and at times they believe they have done the right things, yet they have done the wrong things. Many of us are committing evil things unknowingly, my Father. May you forgive us. Forgive us. You are a long-suffering God. I was blessed to know that you have always wanted to be introduced as a merciful Father. May your mercy be upon us tonight, O oh Lord. That not based on what we have done, but based on what you have done, dying for us on the cross, accept our request to have our names retained in the book of life. And to those who are standing here, they are not sure, for sure they say, I know my name may not be there. Perhaps their names are there, but they have not enough faith to know that their name is there. Lord, I pray for them that you may increase their faith. Maybe somebody was unwilling to come because they feel because of what they have lived their life here. Their name may not be here in your books, but my father, I know the report may be different because you are a gracious God. You said your thoughts are not like our thoughts. And so, Father, if somebody was left there struggling, strengthen them, my Father. Give them this assurance that they can say, like Paul, I know now I have fought a good fight. Even though I'm being poured or like a drink, I know my name is in heaven. Pull them from down there. Pull them from that cloud of doubt and bring them in confidence to walk with you. And for those who are yet to make a decision for baptism, Lord, you are speaking to them. My prayer is like that of Israelites through Moses. We will go together with our children. And as a church, Lord, I'm praying tonight, we are not going to heaven alone, those who are here. We are going even with those who are doubting, bring them to the fold. Lord, tonight, let none 
leave this sanctuary without assurance of their salvation. For the hour is now, and the time is here, and nothing stops them. Stretch your gracious might hand and touch them and whisper to them, it is well, it is well, it is well, my child, that they may have confidence that you are right here just because of their salvation. Take us home, a people who have come from the holy mountain. May we be renewed and refreshed. And even as we come tomorrow morning, I pray may the joy of salvation gladden our hearts. May we walk here very in the morning knowing, yes, we are coming to the presence of God. Thank you, my Father. I bless your name because of your man servant. Thank you for using him. The devil is not happy. But we rebuke him in Jesus' name. And we declare he has no place in this committee. May your spirit continue hovering in this committee. Take every seat, every position, every entrance, everything and everywhere in this compound. May your Holy Spirit take residence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For your grace. And now, may the grace of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and the, the love, love of, God, of God and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with those up front here and those standing there and those watching online now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.